But a world where everyone could seize victory could only make Athens even more unstable. As soon as Cleisthenes gained power, he found that others were conspiring against him. Here, heroism still meant one thing. Seize power whenever and however you can. The only rule is that you get what you can and that you fight. You have to go in there and show that you can win. The most ambitious of those conspiring against Cleisthenes was a man named Isagoras. Isagoras was another Athenian aristocrat. He too had been brought up to believe that power was his right. But Isagoras also knew that he could not gain power on his own. Isagoras took an unprecedented step. He turned outside Athens for support. He sent a message to the Spartans, Greece's most feared warriors. Isagoras was an old friend of the Spartans. Rumor had it that he had shared his wife with the Spartan king. The Spartans immediately provided a force of their finest troops to back up Isagoras' bid for power. To help him betray his city. Isagoras really was upping the stakes. It brought in the most powerful state in Greece. It was pretty clear he was going to turn Athens into a subject state to Sparta. With his Spartan force, Isagoras staged a coup, seizing control of Athens. He and his troops would rule from the high point of the city, the stronghold atop the Acropolis. The first targets of the new tyrant were the other aristocrats. Cleisthenes, most of all. Over 700 households were cast out of Athens, including Cleisthenes and his entire family. Cleisthenes would leave his city, living once again under the hand of a despotic dictator. A dictator who now ruled with the support of the most fearsome power in Greece, the Spartans. For Cleisthenes, all his childhood lessons seemed betrayed. He had been brought up to be an aristocrat and a ruler. To emulate the mythical heroes. But all this had led to was conflict and feuding, death and exile power struggles amongst an aristocratic elite. How could Athens ever escape from this pointless cycle of violence? But even as Cleisthenes agonized in exile, Athens was rocked by an extraordinary event. Like their mythical heroes, the ordinary people of Athens now took their destiny into their own hands.
Pythagoras and his Spartan allies blockaded themselves atop the Acropolis, the high point of the city. But even there, they could not escape the fury of the common Athenians. For two days and nights, Pythagoras held out against this extraordinary uprising. Until finally, on the morning of the third day, he was forced to surrender. The year was 508 BC. This would be Athens' first step to empire and glory. For the first time in recorded history, the people had turned on their rulers and seized power for themselves. Athens at this point is in control of the mob, the ordinary people who had risen up without organized leadership, and then the question is, what happens now? At this new dawn, the Athenian people now turned to one man. A figure whose life, whose experiences and disappointments had given him a unique vision. Cleisthenes was recalled from exile and asked to build a government. When Cleisthenes returned to Athens after the expulsion of the Spartans, he faced a really remarkable challenge. There was no possibility for just simply putting back in power a group of aristocrats. There was no possibility for him to declare himself tyrant. In a sense, what Cleisthenes had to do is design a revolutionary governmental solution for a revolutionary political situation. 